Welcome to Corsica. If you think you've seen the mountains of Pops, look again. This is incredible, incredibly wild. No people living here, it's just very rough rocks. And nothing out here except for this tiny little ribbon of road that climbed about 500 meters in the last 15 minutes. So we're just climbing and climbing. If you look over there, it's just wildness. It's great, it's incredible. Really good at coming over to the Corsica. Uh, this is our first time here, and actually, I'm considering moving here already. <laughs> so, we landed in Bastia at about 7 30 in the evening. We took this windy little road all the way down here. The idea behind that was to get a nice uh, sunset just before we pitch our tents. And as the crow flies, it's about 10 kilometers, 15, but by road, it takes you about 45 minutes. Very windy roads. Just past Saint Florent to the north, there's a little campsite there. It's not very well signposted, I guess. It's right on the beach, right on a um, pebbles beach. It's in a little bay, and we were allowed to put our car right on the beach with an unobstructed view of the sea, of the water, which was really cool. We had a bit of car trouble. I thought, okay, because of that, we'll stay another night. And I think we were happy we did. It was so mellow and so tranquil. It's not a very sophisticated camping. It's very basic, but everything there is there that you need. So the next morning, we took this road along the coast, which was just fantastic. You're right on the edge of the water there, a lot of steep drops, tiny villages you go through. On your right hand side is a backdrop of hills and mountains, which is spectacular. Saint Michel and then took up this road here. And this area here is where we saw a lot of forest fire damage, a lot of burnt forests, a lot of blacked out hills. Very incredible to see just how far a bush a bushfire can get. And we heard from a camper at the campsite that there was a point here which you get to, which is a Really nice little road. Here's 13 kilometers of sand road, a lot of rocky little outcrops. You can do it in your normal car, but you will have a struggle to get there. It'll take you at least an hour to get to the coast, to the beach. We were led to believe there was a nice uh, campsite on the beach there. But we got there I and mean, you can't even get to the beach with your car. There is a campsite there called Paradise, U Paradiso in Corsican. It's not paradise at all actually. The evolutions are very bad, it's very basic, uh, it's quite uh, packed, it's not a very big site, there are a lot of people around. It's a dry little hillside top with a couple of trees in it, there's no view at all. Yeah, we, uh, we did it, you know, why not? We were there anyway, but I wouldn't recommend it if you need a little bit more comfort. So anyway, we had a nice evening there, I guess. You make your own nice evenings, right? But don't go there for the view, just go there for that lovely little track, which is nice to drive on. So the next day we headed off back down the west coast, past Lille de Rousse, past Calvi.
Porto. Actually, OTA. OTA is actually the uh, official name for it in uh, Corsican. And this area here is fantastic. It's a protected area. You can't really get in there. And it has the most amazing views of the cliffs from the sea, which is very nice to do. There is the municipal camping here. It's also not much grass on the ground, but it's very big, very spacious. There is a nice village there. There's a diving community. There's a lot of boating community, maybe like surfing. Um, we wanted to rent a boat, a little rib, to go around the coast here. We were unable to do that. The, wood, the wind was too rough. In fact, we stayed another night in hopes of better, better weather to try and get a boat. But even the next day, we weren't even allowed to swim on the beach because the lifeguard said it's too rough and the waves were really dumpers. It was really bad. But the village is really charming. It's quite touristy, I guess. It'll be quite packed in the summer. But as I said, this is a perfect time of year to come down here. September is great. The weather's perfect. The people are still quite relaxed. I think the locals are quite happy because the tourist season's winding down. At the end of this sept uh, September, all the campings closed down as well. So we really enjoyed that. Lovely restaurant, great seafood. So the day after that, we were told there's a road from Porto to Court. Very scenic, very nice to drive. Beautiful views, you're very high up in the mountains. You get a lot of large vistas, you go through forests, you go through rocky areas, you go through plains, you go along rivers. It's a beautiful little road to drive. not allowed to go to Ajaccio. Apparently it's quite a nice place. It's the biggest city uh, town in uh, Corsica but because of that reason we were going to avoid it. We didn't want to go to big uh, cities at all. Just visit the little villages, be in the small towns. So we tried to avoid this but we needed a campsite so we took this road here which is very remote. This section I think Judging from all the tire marks on the road is where the part of the Corsica Rally uh, takes place. It's a tiny little road, it's about four meters wide, if that, and it's just right on the edge of, of the drop-off. There are no barriers at all, the trees are right next to the road. I have no idea how these guys drive this fast, as you can see on TV. We managed to get down there, it was a very interesting drive. Here, which was called Uprunelli, Uprunetti. It was a four star camping, and basically, we had run out of time that day, so we just picked the first one we saw. We don't normally do that in like the little basic campings, but in this case, it was, it was okay. 
traffic wasn't that busy, which was nice. You can imagine this summer it would be quite packed. But we uh, had a good evening there. There was no view or anything. It was just a basic campsite, very enclosed, uh, a lot of trees. And it was pleasant enough, but not really worth going to, I would say, if you're looking for a bit more interesting uh, place to go, you know, play, uh, interesting camping, let's put it that way. So from there we decided we're going down to the bottom of the island. So from here, took the interior road, another little road, I mean, these roads are incredible. heading for Bonifacio, which we were told is really worth seeing. I think that's quite famous. There are hundreds of tourists there just blocking the whole village. It's a beautiful old area. The fortress on the hilltop is just incredible and it looks out onto Sardinia. The port is just magic. It's lovely cut out of the rock. You can rent a boat, go around the coast, have a look at all the rock formations, all the caves, right at the sea edge. Uh, we spent the night there in a little camping. It was about 30 uh, places. In fact, I think it were 20 places and they put 30 cars in there because we were really close, but it was quite nice, very quaint. Now we're heading back north. We're getting towards uh, Porto Vecchio. From Porto Vecchio. Depends on if you say it in Sardinian or French or Italian. And south coast is quite developed. There are a lot of private homes here, a lot of big villas overlooking the sea. There's a lot of tourism here of course, the hotels, all of that. And it's quite different from where we started off near Bastia in the north and we the Cap Course which was quite uh, remote and I think it's a protected reserve as well. But anyway, here we are. We're now heading up the east coast. Uh, it rained last night. It's a bit cloudy today, so the sea is have its beautiful blue color, which is really clear as well. So today we thought we'd just make some miles, go a bit up the east coast, and see if we can get about halfway up, and then maybe head inland and go back to the mountains again. But it's just great being here, you know, lovely place. Let's see where we need to go right down here. Oh yeah, stick with us as we head up uh, the east coast again. So we ended up here, very nice camping. This is where you park your car right on the beach. There's a row of about 20 camper vans on the front row. We managed to find a spot in between them and that was it. There were hardly anyone, anyone else there. Normally it's three or four rows deep with campers and caravans but this time of year is just great. 
You're out on the beach, it's soft sand, it's white beachy sand. There's a good swimming, uh, the water is very clear. The water is quite warm this time of year, I'd say 22, 23. And we really had a nice time there. There's a good pizza joint there, a nice little restaurant that makes pizzas and other um, Italian dishes. Very nice. We stayed another day because of that. We just enjoyed the relaxed vibe. We didn't want to drive all the time. We needed to find some downtime, if you like. That's the reason for going on a holiday, right? The problem with this place, the problem, was the wind. At that time, it was uh, about 12 September, I think. There was the most incredible amount of wind all over the island. This was gale force winds, this kind of stuff. This was incredible. We had to close the tent down and get in the car, sleep inside the car. Otherwise, we would have been blown away. It was a, a rough night, I would say. But we survived it. The next morning was the most beautiful sunrise you've ever seen. As red as anything. It's just very calm. The, the weather had just changed completely in a, in, a, in a couple of hours. It was very nice to see that. But we had to move on again because we only had 12 days to do the whole island so we'd like to see as much as we can and we headed north again up here and I really wanted to go to Monte Cinto all the way back here one of the highest peaks on the island maybe it is the highest What we found here was a lovely little road along the edge of a river, very steep uh, drops, about 100 meters high. A lovely place to go um, rock climbing, if you like the kind of thing, hiking. At the end of this road, there is no way to continue. You have to turn around and go all the way back. There is a, a ski, uh, ski lift or something to that effect. So we drove all the way to about here and there is a camping there in these tall pine trees next to a river, really nice, it was a great place. So we turned around and went back down the hill along this beautiful drive again to somewhere about here. And here is the camping next to a river, it's in a, almost a valley. So you see nice views through the trees here. It's quite nice there, it's quite a farm community, a lot of cows around which is really funny, you can hear them in the morning. It's a, a nice camping, it's a very basic uh, shower block, but everything works, everything was clean. There is even a pool, which we tried, and the water was cold. So the next day, we decided we need to get to Bastia by Friday morning. Friday morning, we had to be at the boat by 7 in the morning, so we couldn't leave, uh, we couldn't park too far away. Back down here, we decided to cut in here. This is a lovely here.
is a bit of off-roading here. There's a track which is mentioned on your uh, navigation, on Google Maps, on your TomTom -tom, as a main road, but in fact there's nothing there. It's just sand, dirt road, which is quite a long section, which is quite nice, very remote as well. All you see around you are goats, goat farms, cows and cow sheds, not much else, very remote here. travel all the way down and then we got onto the plains and these plains here are like a delta that was where they grow their grapes we saw kiwis there some maize some fruit trees it's quite nice here it's quite a contrast from here it's quite remote in the trees in the forest and here you're back on the plains we drove onto the main road across the main road and we got to this nice camping here when you first see this camping you think, oh my word, there's a lot of um, rubbish lying around at the entrance. There are rusted out old trucks, old tractors. The house looks very old. The ablution blocks must be at least 50 years old, but it's all clean. There is a lot of it. There are a lot of sinks, a lot of showers, very uh, generous for the size of camping it is. And once again, you can park your car right on the beach, which is what we love to do at the moment. So we're right there, among some reeds, there's a little um, delta there, a little bit of water as well. Lovely warm water, clear water. Very calm place, uh, very chilled atmosphere. It was our last night of cooking out as well, so we had a nice big meal as we were heading to Bastia the next day. So we thought we'd take a little road in here. And this road basically, it's about 500 meters high above, the, above sea level and it sort of follows the edge of the sea, as you can see it parallel to the main road along the coast. And what you have is a lovely tiny little winding roads, a lot of hairpins, beautiful uh, rocks on one side and the other side a steep drop off and a view out over the whole sea. And this road, you can take it as long as you like, we just kept finding more pieces, more pieces. And there was one section of about five kilometers long. Once again, on the map, it's listed as a, as a main D road, but it was a road from the Romans, I guess. It was made of little rocks, little stones, and it's five kilometers long. It's on the edge of a hillside with a view of the ocean, and it's very slow going. It's quite a rough little road. It's very remote as well. There's nothing around you, no housing, no villages, nothing. It was just a great way to end it off. In Bastia there is a place called uh, the Red Sand uh, Beach Camping. Camping is a generous word, it's basically just a big square piece of dirt where you can park your camper. But it's next to the beach, it had a restaurant right there, good little uh, food there, it wasn't too expensive as well. And basically you are 10 or 15 minutes from the port which is very handy when you need to leave early in the morning. So we spent the night there, we had a nice last swim in the sea, the med, it was great, it was warm, very basic camping, but yeah, what more do you want? You're right there, it's your last night. You don't have to cook anymore, pack your bags, get ready for an early start the next morning. 
because you're packing away your tent in the dark and you're basically heading to port while the sun comes up. enjoyed the trip we've had a fantastic time we've had a little less than two weeks we've done the whole island we've done a whole lap of the island but a zigzag across we've seen mountain ranges we've seen beaches we've seen beautiful Mediterranean Sea we had some good weather we had some challenging weather and I hope you've enjoyed our trip with us and I hope we've been able to show you a little bit of what Corsica is about because it's a brilliant island you need to come here so thank you for watching Catch you on the next one. Please think about subscribing. Leave some comments below. Have you been here before? Let us know. We'd love to hear from you.